If you've been on my channel, it's quite obvious I have an obsession with the Nintendo 3DS. It's my favorite console of all time thanks to its strong library of games, console apps that helped breathe life into the follow-up of Nintendo's best-selling console, and the fact that it was my introduction to the online aspect of gaming thanks to the eShop, internet browser, and being able to watch Breaking Bad on my 3DS through the Netflix app. But most people like to point to Street Pass as being the console's best feature. If you don't know what Street Pass is, you're genuinely missing out, and why did you click on this video? The 3DS had a feature where if you put your console in sleep mode and passed by someone else who was doing the same thing, the two systems would exchange Street Pass data. This added the other person's me to your me plaza, showing off things like their most recent games, a message that they set, as well as a few other things. This one, relatively minor aspect of the console has gained a considerable following online, with people setting up events for 3DS owners to meet and exchange Street Pass information to hopefully grow their Mii plazas. Heck, this video is getting released during the global Street Pass weekend of 2024, and if you've been on my channel before, you've seen me document my efforts at the Sonic Symphony. In that video, I teased another trip I'd be going on and how I'd make another video in that style for the trip. Once spring break rolled around, it was time for my family and I to travel to London for possibly our last real vacation together. With my brother playing college baseball starting next year and me being a man-child who's close to graduating college, my parents wanted to take advantage of the last time mine and my brother's spring breaks would align. We would be flying out of North Carolina, up to New York, and then would take an overnight flight all the way to Heathrow Airport in London. So thankfully, I'd be able to sleep on the long flight over. So on Saturday, March 23rd, my family and I made our way to the airport, ready to begin our vacation, and I was ready to get some street passes. I wasn't expecting any until we at least got up to New York, since the airport out of North Carolina was relatively small, but it was worth a shot anyways. So with my Galaxy 3DS on and in my pocket, after TSA since I had to take it out, we were waiting for our flight. Well, until Delta decided to cancel it. Apparently, New York was receiving a pretty heavy storm. Degenerate New Jersey native and fellow 3DS owner Lyons can tell you more about it. The Queen summoned gallons of rain and piss to fall out of the sky. So that's one entire day of our vacation gone. One entire day of potential street passes. But I suppose there's nothing I can do because of the weather, so we'll just have to come back tomorrow and try again. Back on the way to the airport for attempt number two. I mean, this time we're for sure going to be making it to London by the following morning, right? The flight from North Carolina to New York went off without a hitch, a short, smooth flight that only lasted about an hour and a half, give or take. Now, this is actually my first time in New York, and I only wish it wasn't spent stuck inside of an airport. I could be going to the Nintendo store or any of the other famous video game places, but no, here I am, stuck at JFK. With how long we had to wait for our next flight, I decided to eat and then do some walking. The whole airport felt almost like a shopping mall. Fancy designer outlets and duty-free stores selling bottles of alcohol worth more than a monthly payment on a car. I was definitely entertained for the time I was kept there. And of course, I had to keep my 3DS on me. Cause what if I missed someone arriving late into the night who was also carrying a 3DS? This didn't end up happening, but who knows, it could have been possible. But then Delta hit us with back-to-back -back brutal blows. It is currently 1.16 a.m. and we are waiting for our flight to London, but apparently there's not a pilot, so this can be delayed for another three or so hours, and I'm not, I'm not having a great time. So after even more wandering, we got the bombshell. The flight was cancelled. Everyone was pissed. Delta was so kind and set us up in a hotel room that we didn't arrive at until 5 in the morning. It is 4 in the morning. 
So I'd be getting a whopping four hours of sleep before we had to check out and go back to the airport for day three of this amazing vacation. All right, let's try this again. Back to the airport, killed some time with Ocarina of Time 3D, walked around some more with my 3DS and visited the Lego store, which had this really cool Statue of Liberty built with an animated face. Now, we were actually able to board this Virgin flight, and it was better than anything I could have anticipated. By the time we were up in the air, it was dark outside, so the smooth purple lights of the plane cabin made this a wonderful experience. The flight was extremely underbooked, so I was able to get an entire row for myself and stretch out my long legs for an enjoyable ride. I played some yokai watch at the recommendation of the world famous Twitch streamer Nixlevel. I watched some TV, ate the surprisingly good airplane food, which was chicken curry, and basked in all of the amenities Virgin Airlines had to offer. If you're flying to across the pond, I highly recommend them. We finally touched down in London around 5.30 their time, and we came into a lovely bit of British weather. Customs took a shockingly short amount of time, I guess that's what it's like when you don't have to deal with TSA, but we barely got a break after the airport before it was time to head to the British Museum. Now, I'm a big fan of museums. I like to look at all the artifacts with historical importance, and if I weren't into STEM, I'd probably be studying history since it's just so cool. I had heard that a few statues or paintings from Animal Crossing would be in this museum, so those were what I was set on finding. With how crowded I expected the museum to be, I had to carry along my 3DS, just on the off chance that some tour group had someone doing the same thing. If I was not into computer science, I would definitely want to be a historian. Because, look at this. Look how cool that is. I had never been in a museum of this caliber. Every room you went into had something cool and interesting. The most popular exhibit was most definitely the Rosetta Stone. And for good reason, since its existence is the only reason we can understand ancient hieroglyphics. But that doesn't excuse people from crowding around the stone, not allowing anyone else the opportunity to view it. The trip was already looking like a great time, but would a street pass add on to that? When I finally got the chance to look, I pulled out my 3DS and to my surprise, the little green light was glowing. I was pretty surprised, I had only been in England for a grand total of 4 hours and I had gotten more street passes than I had in the last 4 months in America. When I finally got an opportunity to look at who I had come across, it was someone named Hui Boy from the UK. If you're watching this, thanks for carrying around your 3DS in 2024. You're one of the good ones out there. After a much needed rest, it was time to get ready for the English national football game against Belgium. I was the one who planned this little excursion since you can't visit England and not see a football game. So we ate some dinner and headed on over to Wembley Stadium. When I tell you this was the most amount of people I had ever seen in one place concurrently, it was insane. We would later find out that the game had amassed over 80,000 fans in attendance, and if I weren't already deaf, I most certainly would be because of how loud all the cheering was. I've been here for about uh, two hours, give or take, and I don't think I've gotten a single street pass, but I hope I get one because there's... I mean, it looks like a sold out game, and that's 90,000 people. And if at least one person is not uh, carrying a 3DS, I'm going to be so surprised. I was able to capture a handful of goals from both England and Belgium. And I'm glad this game didn't end up being zero to zero, since that would have just been boring. Ah! Ah! 
My favorite moment was capturing Jude Bellingham's game-tying goal as paper airplanes were being thrown onto the field from the upper seats. It's it! Now, even though there were 80,000 people in attendance, none of them were carrying around a 3DS. Which isn't surprising because how many sports fans, other than me and my gaggle of cohorts, would be carrying around a defunct console? On to the next day. We'd be going to all the touristy places today. The Tower of London, The Eye, Big Ben, and so on. So we hopped on the subway and made our way into the city. The sheer scale and detail of everything was insane. All the weapons featured at the tower, the crown jewels, which I wasn't supposed to film, but I got a little bit of it anyways, were beautiful. I was dumbfounded by how well preserved everything was. It was after our visit to the Tower of London where I decided to check my 3DS for the first time that day. And what do you know, another green light. Looks like I'm two for two so far on this trip and I couldn't have been any happier. But it'd be a while before I got to check it out. Before our time on the eye, we got to go into a little attraction called the London Dungeon. Now that I wasn't able to record, but just imagine the Tower of Terror at Disney World, but British, and you get the idea. The London Eye was basically what I expected. We got a great view of the entire city, and it really put into scale how massive London was in comparison to any city that I've ever been in. From there, it was more walking and sightseeing, seeing the Big Ben and, you know, some really famous old architecture which looked really impressive. But all I could think about was that glowing green light. That night for dinner, I had the luxury of trying some of London's famous curry, and was really impressed. But back at the hotel, it was time to check out what lucky soul I passed by throughout the day. Wait, where's my new me? Why didn't I go to the gate? I had the green light. It was glowing right there. Turns out this was just a notification from Super Mario 3D Land and Tomodachi Life, instead of something I could actually use. Alright, so I'm back down to being one of two. You know, it's, it's better than nothing, but... The next day was definitely our biggest. We'd be taking an excursion to Windsor to visit the castle and just walk around the town. I heard that Nintendo UK's offices were here, so hopefully I'd be able to snag a street pass if I went in and asked very politely. Because come on, a Nintendo employee's gotta be carrying a 3DS. We took some train rides and ended up arriving just as the rain started to come down. It was not fun waiting in line for the castle as it was pouring and the wind was blowing. But hopefully with all these people, someone would be carrying a 3DS. I wasn't supposed to be filming anything, they had a strict no photography policy, but I wanted to, so I was sneaky about it. The castle was massive, all the artwork was incredible, and the history preserved with the knight's crests and artifacts made this a worthwhile trip, even if I didn't end up getting a street pass. But afterwards, I wanted to make my way over to where I thought Nintendo UK's headquarters were. It was kind of tucked away, and once I found the building, I was denied entry! What the heck, I can literally see the bright red door with the Nintendo logo on it! I had to quell my frustrations with an overly sweet donut that was really good. Another day without a street pass. My hopes were really high after the first few hours on my trip, but with one full day left, I was really hoping to get someone new. 
Friday had a really loose schedule. We wanted to see Buckingham Palace and wanted to explore a little around that area. But my brother and I woke up a little late, so we were scrambling to meet our parents at Buckingham before the changing of the guards began. The whole ceremony went on for a lot longer than I expected, and I was more enamored with the detailed statues in front of the palace than the guards or the palace itself. But I'm glad we were able to see this, because when else am I going to visit England again? From there, we went to Leicester Square, and on our way, saw this rally for... something? I couldn't quite understand what it was, but it was loud. Leicester Square had a lot of big stores and casinos. The M&M store was full whole stories of merch and candy, which took a lot of willpower to turn down. After an amazing lunch at the original Hard Rock Cafe, I decided to go on my own to visit the Lego store. I didn't buy any major sets since I was wanting to save my money, but the store itself was crazy. With all of these other children, and grown adults acting like children, I'm sure someone was carrying a 3DS. With all this traveling and walking throughout the week finally catching up to me, I went back to the hotel for a much needed nap. My excursion wouldn't end up netting me any new street passes. I ended the trip with only one. I didn't even get one on the way back despite spending time in two major airports. The flight back was a lot worse. A lack of leg room, I couldn't sleep since I had an aisle seat, and it was two hours longer. But at least the food was good, I can't complain about that, and I got to play some more games on my 3DS. Overall, despite only receiving one street pass for the sake of this video, the trip was great. I got to try all kinds of English food and see all sorts of things that I'll probably never get to see again because of how expensive everything is. This trip isn't going to deter me from bringing my 3DS with me everywhere I go, because what if there's someone out there who's just as desperate for a street pass as I am? If I have any more big trips or excursions planned, I'll definitely be bringing my 3DS along. And if you want to know when I do, you should follow me on Twitter because that's where I'll keep you updated on all the places I go. Thank you for watching, it really means a lot to me, and I'll see you in my next, more traditional video.